Hey YouTube, Temple Craze coming at ya. So, I've been really enjoying doing the whole video thing. I didn't think I would. In fact, I didn't think I would enjoy doing whatnot and doing the live stream stuff, but I've enjoyed the heck out of it. And since then, I've now I'm throwing out videos constantly to you guys and gals because I'm enjoying it so much. Now these panties back here, as I've said in some other videos, these are for my upcoming shows. I, on Wednesday nights, I do what I call the penny show. So I these rolls, I sell them for about six bucks a piece, which you're not gonna find, you know, rolls that cheap anywhere else. Not on eBay, that's for sure. Um, and they're not calls. And look at that thing. That's a beautiful 1958 in there. They're I don't know what's in any of them. I get a, I go through a lot of coinage. So, and then I also buy by the pound from a local dealer. And so I'll split that and I half goes into a bucket that I roll up for you people. And then half I keep and go through myself. And then anything I don't keep goes into that bucket. So that's what those, those come from. Anyway. I did find some more pennies that we can go through though today. I'm not going to use the microscope tonight. I don't feel like doing that much setup. Plus, my area is getting really cramped now. I need to I need to get a better spot to do this. I need to find a better place, mm. uh, some kind of a better studio type setup for myself. Maybe uh, maybe I'll do something in my basement or something, but. I do have a few different coins that I found laying around the house here and whatever that I kind of thought, well, why don't we go through some of this stuff together? I just found, when I was flipping through a book, I just found this. You see these big bars right here across there? Let's see if we can get this just at the right angle so you can see it. See where it says Japanese government right across there? So these are Japanese invasion notes, actually, from when Japanese ruled in, on in the Philippines. And what they did, instead of printing a whole bunch of new notes, they just put these huge black print printed these huge black bars across them. Put that up there. This one, this here, and then right there. So. There's 10 pesos, Filipino. It's a really cool note. Yeah, maybe I'll sell it sometime. I don't know. Like I said, I just found it sitting there in my... It was in between some pages on one of my books. So... <laughs> you just never know what you might find laying around on <laughs> when I'm doing stuff. I don't know. Actually, it's going to go back between a few pages so that I don't damage it. Because I don't have a sleeve for it by me right now. Alright, so yeah, I just found some bags here of, of uh, wheat pennies. So I'm just going to dump them out here. And I know we usually don't have this board here, but I got my show is coming up. And I'm trying to get ready for that too. So, And I don't know if these are all going to be wheat pennies or if there's a mix of stuff in them. I have no idea. Like I said, I just kind of found them over there in my pile of coinage. So let's bring it on down. Oh, let's see, we got a uh, Indian head right off the bat. 1907. It's got a cut mark or something right there in the middle. Kind of horrible, but... And Liberty's completely wore off. So, yeah. Still, anybody that collects Indian heads would appreciate it. Here we got a 55 Denver. It's actually in really nice shape. Oh, I had a comment to clip my fingernails and stuff. Uh, I don't <laughs> like clipping my thumbnails because I use them for a lot of things. Like, you know, ripping open an orange or whatever. I usually clean them. I forgot. 
well, this is impromptu also. I, I wasn't going to do a show or do a video here. Here's another one of those in, here's a, ooh, it's an 08 even. We talked about this. It's got like some glue or something on the back that we're going to talk about. We're going to try to figure out if we can get that off without damaging a coin. I think I definitely want to try it on a different coin than the 08 first. So, but this will be a good candidate if we, if we can get it off of that other coin we were talking about. The, uh, was it a 37 or something like that? I think it was this one. Yeah, this one right here, the 39S. If we can get it off of this one without damaging this coin, then I'll do it on that 08. If you see kind of some jumps too, that's uh, me pausing. I still have the stiffles and I'm trying not to do it on camera. So I keep pausing the video to uh, do the sniffling thingy. 36. Let's see, where am I putting them over there? Okay. There's a 28 Denver. That's nice. I also kind of cleaned up my thumbnails a little bit. I noticed they were dirty and I was like, oh, that's not nice. There's a 1920 that's um, wood grained. We've talked about those. That wood grain look. That one's not horrible shape. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Let's uh, let's zoom in again here. So I'm not trying to hold this up there. I can keep my hands a little more steady on the table. <laughs> it's a 45. I'm just going to set them off wherever. Get them out of my way. Here's a 16. This would be a good placeholder. I mean, I think most 16s that I find are just not in good shape. Here's a 19 San Francisco. Again, I mean, most of those are probably a buck a piece. There's a 10. Actually, a 10 is not bad. You can still see the definition. Uh, get out our pink pointer. I still need to get a pointer of some sort to do this better. But you can still see the cheekbone and the jawbone there. So that's always good. And the ear has got some definition to it still. And the wheat stalks are looking not too bad. So this 10 is actually pretty nice. There's some definite money there. And when I say money, if I take a penny like, say, this 16S here, which has a lamination error on it, and say I sell this for 10 bucks, well, you're thinking, oh, wow, that's just 10 bucks, but that's $9.99 over face. So it's not bad, really. When you start to think about it that way. Um, that's a clipped one. I was thinking that it was maybe hit, but it's not. That's clipped. That means when the panch the planchet was being these were being punched out, it hit just the edge of this one and clipped it. So we have a clipped planchet. That makes it a little more rare, especially being a 28 in decent shape. Right down here, you can see it. That's nice. So I'm kind of stacking the ones that are a little bit nicer over here off to my left in a little pile here. And I'll probably flip them up for the show. There's a 17, not in the greatest of shape. <clears throat> Here's an 18. I don't know what we got going on there. Probably damage. Looks, yeah, that's going to be PMD. Postmint. But, even with the postmint damage, it's a nice looking 18. Maybe not post-mint, though. Now that I'm looking at it, just the way it looks. You just never know. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, we'll kind of set that one off to the side. 
there's so many different types of damages that can happen to pennies and other coins, obviously, that knowing every single type of error and everything else out there is dang near impossible. I see dang there, but some people know quite a few of them. But we never know. I mean, who who knows? The, one person can say, oh, that's mint error. The next could say that's not mint error. And, you know, unless the mint knows that they made that error, you know, who knows, right? There's a 37. That could be a, an RPM there. It could be an RPM. So we'll set that one in the good pile. Not that they're not good, they're all good. Look at the thick rim on that thing. Wow. Hmm. wonder if that's oversized. Yeah, just a hair. Not much, just ever so slightly bigger. There's a 13. Nineteen thirty. Twenty six. These are all really good dates, honestly. Another twenty six. Anything teens and twenties is usually better dates. Thirties, thirties uh, is that in between, and then forties and fifties not so good, but unless you get really nice ones, high quality ones. There's an O2. I'm setting my Indian head pennies down below the camera here. And 55 San Francisco. It's a nice looking penny. There's a 28. With a little lamination on it. That's cool. There's a 30 San Francisco. There's some dog hair. <laughs> 51 San Francisco. Nineteen twenty. Twenty eight Denver. Possibly a repunch. I'll have to go through these with a scope, I suppose. 51 Denver, that's definitely got the repunch mint mark on it. I can see that plain as day. Nineteen twenty Denver. I think that's a little bit harder one to get actually. Twenty, I get I got plenty of twenties. But the Denver, not so many. 29. 28. 35S. Pretty rough shape, though. 29S, also not in greatest shape. Another 10, 52 San Francisco, with something's going on with that S, I don't know what though. Well, maybe we will set up the scope and look at a couple of these. 37, not all of them, just the ones that I've got questions about. 50, and there's a 20 San Francisco. So, let me get this, the scope set up. We'll look at a few of these. Alrighty, got the scope all set up here. Let's see here. So here's the 52. Let's see if we can focus that up a little better. So 
So a 52S there. Um, yeah, I can see just barely. And I can see it on the scope better than I can see it through here. But you see there's a little, looks like a little extra S coming out there. So that's going to be the repunch. That's going to be the repunch on it. Let's see what do we got here. This is a 28. I don't remember what the deal was with this one. Must have been on the back. Whoops. What's the deal with this 20? Oh, we have a small lamination here. Right there. Just a little guy. little lamination there. What's this one? That, this is that repunch mint mark that I said I could see from a mile away. Now that I'm looking at it closer, I'm going to have to look because there is such a thing as a vertical and horizontal repunch mint mark. And I don't know if it's in this year or not. So I have to look in my books because this could be like a, a D, like a, a horizontal D over or under a vertical D or vertical under a horizontal, whatever you want to call it. But definitely an RPM anyway. Let's see, this is a, I think this was another RPM, possibly, nope, nope, just dirt, just grud, crud and grud, all around there, that's why it looked like one, but not an RPM, not a bad looking penny though. But not an RPM. Let's see what's this one. I think this one was just. Oh, this one's the clip right there. Now you can probably see that clip a lot easier. 1928. There is. Now this is damage, but this little bulbous right here, that's actually a cud, or not a cud, a uh, die chip. Which is technically a cud, really. Yeah, you can still see a lot more damage once you get them under the scope, can't you? Now this, now one thing I want to mention, in grading, they don't use a scope okay when they grade these coins they don't use a scope so they don't see all of this damage up close or whatever they'll see some of the bigger stuff but not this much yeah that's definitely there's the clip very nice very nice let's see what do we got on this one here okay Yeah, this is definitely an S over S. Down here you can see the other S sticking out, how fat that is and stuff. Yeah, that's going to be an S over S. 16. And that's a big lamination tear. So this penny's actually got a few things going for it. It's not in bad shape, really, for a 16. We still can see some separation of the wheat grains. This side's better. We have this beautiful big lamination here all the way across. And then we also have that repunched mint mark right here. But yet we have some just the lettering is still beautiful we do have some definition of the ear the cheekbone 
the jawbone, the suit. Yeah, that's not a bad one. All right, so this is a 1910 that was in relatively remarkable good shape for a 10. Let's just take a look at it. We got some damage here. But, you know, I, I tell you what, I mean, mine in my book's nicer than this. But if I was starting out and just looking to fill a book and stuff, I would not be ashamed of one looking this good in my book. Maybe someday I should show my book, actually, huh? But this reverse, man. Yeah, look at all that gruddiness in there. Just th That's the kind of stuff I almost like. would like to be able to clean out. Just to give it that better look. But that's what they say. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it both ways. Maybe we'll do a poll. Maybe we'll talk about it. Maybe I'll do a live stream one of these days once we get a little better equipment and I can set up like a uh, nice camera and get up on a computer and all that good stuff. We could do a live stream. Okay, so this one's the one we were looking to see if this was PMD or actual mint damage. Um, still very difficult to tell, I think. But I'm going to say this is PMD, post mint damage. Sure looks like it on this side at least. But even with that post mint damage there, again, if you're looking to fill a book, this is a 1918. So we got over a 100 year old penny here. And besides that mint damage, this thing is actually pretty nice. I mean, look at, we have the definition still on the ear. We have definition in the beard area. The coat's looking really nice. So, yeah, that's actually not a bad looking penny. So those ones I'm, I'm thinking are pretty good. They'll be really good for uh, putting up there on the, the auction. So I'm going to set them in a little baggie off to the side here. And those ones I will take over to my area where I, where I uh, put pennies into 2 by 2s Basically, I got all my stuff for it in a different area. But that area is just way too messy to have doing um, my uh, shows at. So now I'm just going to kind of scoot you down here. Usually I'd turn you off or pause it for this, but yeah, I'll just do it all right here. All right, so that's what we have for pennies. I do have a couple other coins here though and I thought what the hell we'll just do them all um I don't mind if this gets to be about 40 minutes long-ish again so I got a couple dimes here these are silver dimes they are 2005 and 2006 um San Francisco these are absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and they are not clad they are silver 90 percent proof dimes i've had them for a while and just now i'm thinking about uh just selling them i would think they should go for I mean, usually a silver dime that one's got a big old thumbprint on it Usually, though, a silver dime will go for 3 to $5, a normal one. These should hit about 10 These should go for about 10 bucks each. In fact, when I go to sell them, I'm going to start the bidding at $10 each on them. And if they don't sell, then they're not going to sell. That's all there is to it. I'll keep them. Maybe I'll send them in for grading. I did say on one of my last videos that I had another roll of nickels that was um, chillaxing over in a different area here. So let's just back the camera up here a little bit. 
And that way we can kind of go through some of these, huh? These are really nice nickels, too. That's why they were in this roll. I knew where these were. I kind of know what most of these are. Look at that 68 Denver. That's a beautiful looking coin right there. Is these all my 68 Denvers? This may not be the roll I was thinking about. Yeah, these are all the 68 Denvers we've already gone through. Ay ay ay, I tell you, I got so you're probably like, wow, great, good job. Oh wait, maybe hold on. Here's a 2012. Look at that. Full steps. It's not the obverse ain't in the best of shape on it. But look at that reverse. That's got full steps. In fact, in fact, get the pointer. In fact, when we start looking at these side stairs too, they can get a special designation. I don't remember what it is. So if we have full steps here, here, and right across the front, you can get a special designation for that. I just don't remember what that designation is. I've never been able to get that designation. So, so that's actually a really nice or a nickel right there. Is there anything else in here besides? Oh, here we go. So it isn't all 68s. So this is the one that I brought over. Here we go, an 82 Denver. It's a nice looking one. Here's a 61. Denver. I don't know. To me, nickels just don't get the the uh thanks that they should get i guess there's a 91 philly i nickel roll hunt quite often 63 denver i see some steps on that thing what is it 92 denver Seventy-three Philly. That's in really nice shape for a seventy-three. Like, look at that obverse. Thing is gorgeous. Even that reverse is really nice. Look at that. You still see some steps even. Wow, it's a nice looking nickel. I see lots of steps on that one. What do we got here? Ninety-five Philly. It's nice. There's an 85 Philly. Uh, I don't think that's all the steps, but I do see some. It's always nice when you get some steps at least. 46, hoofta. She's in rough shape. Looks like that one might be a full stepper. 99 Philly. There's a 64 Philly. There's like, I don't know, 7 billion, I think, of those made. I don't know. It's not that high, but it's, I think it's 1.7 billion. 92. There's an 80. Denver. Maybe if I move my light, camera will quit freaking out so much. That's nice. There's another Denver. That's a 64 Denver. So there was less of the 64 Denvers made than there was of the 64 Phillies. Ninety-seven Denver. And some of these newer ones are like, oh, why didn't you keep that newer one there? Well, because it's hard to find steps on nickels. It really is. There's an 83 Philly. Holy crud, that's a nice shape. And there is some steppage going on. 
Uh, this one, I don't think I'm going to sell. It's not a full step. But it's definitely MS condition. And I would say it's mid-MS. Maybe like, I'm going to say 40 or 64-ish. 64 probably, yeah. That one's probably going to get graded. 78, Denver. It was a nice 75, Denver. Very nice. Eighty-seven. Still has got milk spots all over it from the mint. Seventy-one Denver. And that's got steps. Again, without getting it under the scope, I don't I'm not gonna be able to tell you if they all have full steps. I mean, but sure look like a bunch of these do. It's a 73 Philly. We really need to get some better cameras going on here. 89 Denver. Actually, what would be fun to do is to do a live stream where I'm doing some coin roll hunting. 75. Oh, there's a San Francisco 70. Pretty sure that's a business strike and not, not a uh, proof. Doesn't look like a proof. Yeah, it looks like a business strike. That's a nice one there. There's a 76 Denver. My camera really is wigging out today. Got a lot of luster still going on. Anyway, since my camera is getting all wiggy wiggy woggy on here, let's uh I'm just gonna say enough. <laughs> I had fun. You've seen kind of some of the stuff I have. We're gonna definitely have to do some more videos here. I'm enjoying, like I say, doing these videos. That's why I keep posting so many of them here. I'm hoping you're enjoying them. If not, you know, let me know. Let me know in the con fields there if, you, if you're having fun with these videos, if you're not having fun with them, if there's something specific you want to see. Uh, also, in the community section on the main page of the YouTube channel of this one, you'll find a poll that I put up um, asking what people think about me doing a uh, Patreon, if you think I should do a Patreon or not. Um, and then also I want to know down below in the comment field, if you do think we should do a Patreon, okay, well then, this is San Francisco, 40 San Francisco, that's nice. Then, uh, you know, what kind of things would you like to see? I'm thinking for like around a $5 range that we do like videos that are only Patreon members get to see. Um, and then maybe in a, uh, $20 range, we do, uh, like, I don't know, maybe a roll of, of, uh, of pennies that I send you to sh search, you know, each month is what we're talking is each month. And then, uh, maybe at a uh, $50 range. We'll give you like a free silver half dollar, 90% silver half dollar. And at a hundred dollar range, hundred dollars, we could do like a uh, free roll of, um, you know, unsearched roll of half dollars or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I, I need to make sure that, obviously, because Patreon takes a portion of the money for the whole thing, I'm sure. I mean, I've never, I haven't looked into it that closely. I mean, I have a Patreon account for myself for a couple uh, streamers that I give, uh, that I follow or whatever, that I 
have, you know, that I support, I should say. Um, so, let's back up a little bit. Don't need to be zoomed in on my hands. Uh, so I do have one. I don't know what kind of fees they take or whatever. Uh, so, and I, and the whole point of the Patreon is I, I want to do, I want to use it to buy not only better camera gear, like a, uh, better lighting. I mean, our, this light's pretty nice. It's really nice, actually. I'm thinking about buying another one. It wasn't that expensive either, like 12 bucks, I think it was, on Amazon. That's the other thing I'm thinking about. I'm hoping I can do an Amazon affiliate link soon so that some of the stuff that I use in my shows and stuff, we can, you'd be able to go in there, use my affiliate link, and I can make a little money that way. You know, some of these books that I use, the stand I use for, I mean, the stand that I use here for my phone works nice. The books that I use, the scope, you know, that kind of stuff that I use, that you guys could go there and get it that way, and I could get a little bit of something off of it. Or a little bit something something back um but you know that's all stuff in the future obviously but yeah and then also with the money from the patreon account then i could also buy uh you know like i say penny boxes and nickel boxes and quarters and dimes and all that and we could do um if you want we can do live streams of them you know five six seven eight hour live streams of just opening and going through them all and I'd have no problems with that. In fact, I'd find that to be quite fun. Being able to talk with people as I'm going through the stuff. That, to me, sounds like a great time. I have an amazing scope, like a $300 scope that I can get hooked up to the computer and to a big screen and stuff. So we can, so it's easier to see. And then if we have a, a webcam that we're using instead of the phone, we can have that all looking at the... Uh, we could have the webcam looking at the screen for where the scope's hooked up and everything. And yeah, I think it would just work out really well. I've had, I have plans, I have ideas, but ideas and plans won't get very far without the money. And that's something I don't have. I don't have the money. Anybody that tells you that coin collectors have money, well, some of us do, some don't. I am one that does not have money. I don't have any money. I was a computer tech. I lost my job a couple months ago. I've been struggling to find a job, which I don't know why. It's computer industry. I should be able to find a job, no problem. Um, but it's just not happening in my area. I could if I wanted to relocate. I don't want to relocate. So... I've decided to take on this as a kind of like a career for me. A career path is YouTube and whatnot, buying and selling coins and stuff. And the only way I can do that is with help from my viewers. That's the only way I'm going to be able to grow this channel is with from help from you people. You know, and if you can't afford to give me help, that's fine financially. You could also help by clicking the like button commenting down below sharing it with anybody you know that might be interested in coins so we can get up to that thousand subscribers and then i can monetize and that'll help me so there's lots of ways to help anyway i need you to comment let me know though and i will keep bringing you the best content that i can possibly bring you as of right now and as we build some money and stuff i will bring you better content and who knows where it'll go i hope it'll go a long ways i hope that we can do this for a long time and have a lot of fun with it i want this to be your channel as much as it is mine thanks for watching please comment subscribe share like um check out my whatnot link down below come see me on whatnot maybe buy some of this cool stuff from me thanks a lot have a good one.